We begin with a lawsuit in California regarding some of the impacts as it relates to student performance or other benchmarks during the pandemic. As you are more than well aware, during the pandemic, the schools were closed. Perhaps this was good, perhaps not, but also perhaps not free, because maybe that online education wasn't as good as the in-person education. This could be due to a lot of reasons. It could be that the education itself wasn't as good because the communication technology, although of course has it has advanced, isn't quite the same thing as being there in the room. The audio and video quality not necessarily as good, depending particularly on the audio recording device that was used. So some difficulty in understanding the communication and, and as well as course, as well as students aren't able to see each other and interact with each other or their teachers, which is particularly potentially impactful to young students who might need that literal face time in order to better socialize. And so there was a lawsuit over this about the, about the impact of the education as it relates to COVID and not having in-person education. Well, California responded to this lawsuit by how about we prevent researchers from testifying about these impacts? How about we prevent the people who have done some studies and said, hey, you know, that COVID education with the not in-person, that was not free. It led to these potential consequences. Oh no, we don't want to hear from the researchers who might have some information to share on this. We don't want that. Well, California has decided to back down on this policy and might allow the researchers to testify at least somewhat about what they observed about how COVID impacted children development, child education, and, and other impacts of the COVID educational policies. Let's go ahead and get started with this. The California Department of Education had tried to block academic researchers from testifying in a lawsuit alleging that the state's school closures damaged academic achievement, but finally backed down. So the school closures, maybe it was good because maybe it reduced the spread of the virus, but what at what cost, right? At what cost? The benefits of closing the schools ostensibly is to reduce the spread of the virus. That is the ostensible benefit. Okay, at what cost? And these researchers are like, hmm, there were costs. This wasn't a free decision. This wasn't a decision without consequence. And California's all like, nah, we don't want to hear about that. There's been a recent trend in California towards secrecy, restricting the flow of information to media and public about what the officials are doing because, you know, we don't want that discussed because it might make us look bad. A prime example of this was a harsh warning from the Department of Education to education researchers that they could be punished if they testified in any lawsuit against the department. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, no, you, that nice teaching license you have there. Nice job you have teaching at one of our fine schools. Nice job you have. Be a shame if anything happened to it. You don't want to bite the hand that feeds you, do you? You don't want to testify about how the Department of Education might not be a unilateral, unbounded ball of joy and might have actually made a mistake. You don't. You wouldn't want to testify against us, would you? You don't want bad things to happen to you. Yeah, that's about how well it's going in California right now. A clause that was in the researcher's contracts barred the testimony, even if the researcher was not using data obtained from the department. So one of the ways the Department of Education tried to stop this was by stopping in advance. How about you contractually agree that you can't testify against us, regardless of whether the information you used to testify against us was obtained during your employment. So even if somehow you obtained the information on your free time or from non-work-related sources, you still can't testify against us because that would be bad and we don't like that because it might make us look bad. Yeah. The warning which officials have partially walked back, but you know, not all the way, was issued because the state was being sued by students whose schooling was interrupted and arguably damaged by the shutdowns. Hey, you know, I'm a student. My education has been impacted by these shutdowns. Maybe it helps stop spread, stop the spread, which is debatable unto itself. But even if it did stop the spread, even if it did do that, it came at consequences. My education was impacted. My social development was impacted. It wasn't the same quality of education. Oh, no, no. We can't have anything that disrupts the orthodoxy. School closures are good, and there's no negative consequences to doing it whatsoever, apparently was the idea.
Attorneys for the students who wanted to sue saw expert testimony from academic researchers about effects of the shutdown and evidently haphazard efforts to instruct students online in what were known as Zoom schools. The Zoom schools were not the same as in person. The quality of the video wasn't as good. The quality of the audio wasn't as good. It's not the same as being in the room. Anyone who's ever been to any sort of meeting online in any context can testify that it's just not the same as being in the room. Being in the room is a, is a markable difference. There is just no audio, there's no video good enough that's really the same, and particularly not in the kind of audio and video that sort of everyone was using in this time. So, no. Several studies have apparently demonstrated that academic achievement among the 6 million public school students suffered. Maybe there was some academic impact, but we don't want to hear about it. But that achievement gap between the poorer and English learning students and more privileged contemporaries became even wider. So there was already a gap between those who had money and those who didn't, and that gap went up, not down, as a result of technology, as a result of the Zoom schools, at least the way the technology was implemented. So it's not really fair to lay it at the feet of technology itself. That's a bit unfair. But at least the way the technology was implemented in terms of how it was done. So, you know, there was a particular impact among the poor and the disadvantage. Yeah, okay. For example, a study that California would prefer you not to know about found that before the pandemic, 51% of students met standards in English language, and then that dropped to 47%. Wow, that's like a 10% decrease. That's, that's notable. Maybe you'd like to know about it. Mathematics proficiency dropped from 40%, to 33%. Okay, that's like a 15% decrease. All right, that's a lot. Maybe we'd like to know about it. Only 35% of low-income students met state standards, and only 21% were proficient in math compared to 65% of higher income and 51% with respect to math. So with respect to those of higher income, for English, how about 65 versus 35? With respect to those of higher income versus not, with respect to math, how about 51 versus 21? One will take a note that those are two pretty different numbers. In fact, it's almost like it's exactly half. Just about. It's almost like it's a two to one. That's pretty significant, right? If 65% if of the students with the English versus 35%, hey, that's almost exactly half. If 51% versus 20%, 21%, hey, that's almost exactly half. The, the, we can't help noticing that the rich students seem to be doing better. So maybe the Zoom is not all it was cracked up to be. There were some problems. Before we didn't notice this gap, now we've noticed the gap. It's a problem. California, for its part, tended to keep its schools closed longer than other states. So this impact from the lack of video quality, the lack of audio quality, the lack of audio treatment of the rooms, echo, you know, the lack of the ability of the room that the people were listening in, the equipment that they were listening in, and just the inherent weaknesses that are involved in, you know, online meetings of any kind, right? Whatever those impacts were, California was doing more of it. So it was more of a problem because California was doing more of it. And so these impacts, one would imagine, would be higher in California than other states who weren't as dumb. So the loss of the loss of the learning as a result of this might be embarrassing to the California government because the California government's like, oh, we'll close the schools forever. There's no problem. And they're like, whoops, there's a problem. So we don't want to have the embarrassment. Incidentally, by the way, these, these problems were predictable in advance. And many degrees were predictable in advance because the importance of face-to-face -face education was something that was already known. The importance, particularly for young students, particularly for young children, the importance of being in the room as a method of socializing, being with other people, already known. So these impacts were known in advance and in many degrees were told and warned of in advance, not that you would notice, of course, because the media was trying to suppress 
all discussion of that. And California is continuing to try to suppress it. So it's not even like, oh, we didn't know better. Whoops, we didn't know better. We had no reason to believe this would be true. What a weird thing. Now we know for the future. What a whoopsie doopsie. No, we totally knew it. And we totally did it anyway. These were reasonably foreseeable. And now we've gotten exactly what we reasonably foresee. And now we prefer you not to know about it. We prefer not the, those who told you and warned you that closing the schools was not a free choice in the sense that it wasn't a choice that didn't incur cost. And that cost isn't just in form of money. Not all costs are money. Those costs are in education, social development, the ability of the students to perform, and so forth and so on. So it's not free. And now that the bills come due, as it were, in this metaphor, the California would prefer not to pay. But yeah, some people might have to tell you about the truth that, yeah, the bill is now due. You have incurred the cost that we told you about, and I know you don't want to know about it, but yeah. When the efforts to muzzle the researchers became known, thanks to reporting by the media, because, you know, some of the media did notice and said, hey, we can't help noticing that California is trying to suppress knowledge of this. There was widespread condemnation from the media and free speech advocates because, hey, why aren't these researchers who specialize in exactly this? They specialize in education and educational development. Why don't they tell us in their expertise what impacts they observe? No, we don't want to do it because it's not favorable to what the California government wants. Hmm, that seems like a problem. Last week, this criticism paid off. The education agency sent letters to researchers saying they could testify about the effects of the school closures, but only if they didn't do with data they obtained through their work. So now at least they can use the external data. So if the only reason you know is from your work, your official work, you still can't tell about that. I suppose that makes sense in some sense, right? It's work for hire. It's information you wouldn't have obtained except through your employment. So we have a right to control the derivative of that, right? We have the right to control the information itself because this particular information would have only come to your attention because of your job. So we have a right to control the information and we also have a right to control the derivative of the information. So I suppose that makes sense. But if you learned about it otherwise, if this information is outside of the job, public information, external information, FOIA information, whatever, well, I suppose you can testify about that. That would be fine, they begrudgingly said. The limitations still preclude the recipient's testimony in legal proceedings to the extent it relies on or uses the proprietary data, including its derivatives. So, you know, I guess fair enough, because that would that's information that you would have only obtained through your employment. So basically, this is a non-disclosure agreement, right? This is information. It's work for hire. It's work you. It's information you only obtained as a result of your employment. So they have a right to control that information. I suppose makes sense. In a response to a lawyer that was helping the plaintiffs in this case, they say we're glad wisdom has prevailed and the state has recognized the provisions in the uh, partnership agreements are problematic. We regret it took all this legal process to protect the rights of researchers to participate in the public sphere. So it is a semi-victory for freedom of speech in so much as they can use information that they would know or would have come to their attention, you know, but for their employment, right? So if it's information otherwise in the public domain, information from other states, information from other sources, information that they derive some other way, then yeah, you can testify about that. I guess it's okay. The state, of course, for its part, seemingly was trying to bolster its assertion that its handling of the pandemic did not have adverse effects because that testimony would be really, really bad. What if the people who have access to our data, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you really hard that if the data had been more favorable to California, they would have been thrilled for their researchers to testify all about it. Yeah, as it turns out, all those people who said that this would be a detriment to education, they were just flat out wrong. You know, all those people who said, you know, that Zoom would suck and it would hurt the education, they're wrong. We have the data to prove it. Also, we have so much data and we're more than thrilled for our researchers who are professionals and understand this to testify all about it. So if the data had been, you know, elsewise, I'm sure they would have been thrilled. But, you know, since not, not so much. So, yeah. Thus, that brings us to the end of the case for the moment about California trying to suppress the bad word. California would prefer you not to understand that, you know, closing the schools might have come with some costs. Perhaps it came with benefits. Perhaps it slowed the spread of the pandemic. Perhaps that was a good thing. So the degree to which it had pluses in the plus column 
is, I suppose, debatable. So what were the advantages of closing the schools? Well, that's a debatable proposition, I suppose. But whatever the advantages are, no matter what the advantages are, there are presumably are costs because very little in this life is free. When you do something, it comes at the cost of something else. Now, maybe it's worth it. Maybe those costs were worth it. Maybe you look at all the pluses and you look at all the minuses and you're like, you know what, California, that was a good decision. You know, I realize it had all these negative effects, but, you know, the positives are so, so worth it that, you know, it's all good. Or maybe you come to a different conclusion. But California would prefer you not to have the information so that you might not be able to think for yourself. Well, California has changed its mind and decided that, you know, maybe you should have access to the information. And that's where we sit, at least for the moment. That brings us to the end of the discussion of this case.